Two years and you never said a word No In two hours and now we said it all uh -huh. You know we don't want to fall in love again Oh no Just think about what we did It never worked, no Tonight I can tell you you don't care You Hey guys and welcome back. As you're going to see, I don't get a ton of things done on this day. I've got one roll of this wallpaper and I'm waiting on the other two to get here and I do sit down and talk to you guys, read my devotional, all that at the end and then the wallpaper is still not here. So anyway, we're going to do what we can. I just wanted to go ahead and post this so it's not a super long video once I add the last part to it and that way you can go ahead and just keep up with me more real time but anyway I just wanted to go ahead and throw this up for you thank you so much for clicking on this video and let me know what you think about the wallpaper I am liking it but it is a little busy but I think after we get blinds and things like that up it's going to tone it down a little bit but anyway um, I do leave a little bit of the real part in too because I know you can make it look really easy when you edit like this just went up no problem but you're gonna see as I cut around that cabinet that phone at that area right there that gets a little complicated so anyway thank you guys and I hope you enjoy Bottom up to make sure. 
Oh, I don't want the bombs running like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're gonna make sure they meet. No, it would be pretty smart though. He is the sweetest man in the world. Can I'll, I'll just tell her that man's sweet. That old man. That dog stuff with games. That old man. He's taking all this softball players off. Yeah. Bless him. And your dad likes him. You know what I'm talking about? That old man that sits in the stands. I don't think I can do it. I think I cut a straight line with my left hand. Man. Oh, I don't know about this. Do you hear me? That's stronger than this one. I'm done for tonight. Not like even remotely straight. That looks fine. Put a dish up there. Oh, well, I can't see that. But. I'll deal with it tomorrow. Where about wall hammers for better if it's where wall the windows? Now, what do you think? I think it's gonna look good. I wonder how long it'll take your cast to destroy it. Daisy done ripped her glasses and her eyeballs off her on the wall. You don't know that was Daisy. Miss Daisy. Miss Daisy. No, it was the little one. But Daisy showed it to her. Fly with the stars sound free. Party all day, every weekend Make it boom, boom to the beat Make it boom, boom, boom Boom, boom, boom Fly with the stars, I'm free I'm free, everybody This phone creep you out, anybody? Wonder what was the most interesting phone conversation that phone ever heard? Okay, clearly it is the next day and I did all I could do last night. I only had one roll of the wallpaper that we chose to go with. The other two were ordered and they're coming today, so I should be able to finish that up. I need to stain the piece of trim that we're gonna put around like the middle, dividing the paint from the wallpaper. So I need to stain that. Um, I've got those curtains in the wash and I'm gonna hang those back up, but I want new ones. I don't know. I thought about not hanging any curtains back up, but once I get the blinds up, maybe I'll be able to tell more. I need to clean those blinds too, and those windows before I put that back up. I had bought three rolls of wallpaper yesterday from Lowe's, and it has the gold diamond shape pattern on it. But when I unrolled it and looked at it, it's a gray background, and I thought it was a white background. So I'm gonna return those. I did get a pull handle for that little drawer on that brown cabinet. You'll see, I'll put that on in a little bit, but our house is a disaster. Y'all know if you work on a project and you focus on just that for days straight, then the rest of your house catches it. And I can't keep up. I cannot keep up with cooking and cleaning and then doing all that at the same time. And if you can, that's awesome, but I can't. But anyway, I wanna read my devotional to you guys and just read it face to face. Just sit down for a minute and tell you what's going on. That's the whole reason I didn't do a one part makeover for that little area is because I didn't have everything I needed to finish it. So don't know what I'm gonna hang back up. I am definitely gonna hang my hanging plant. I love that, it's my favorite. Today's is one of us and it's Philippians 2, 7. When we face hardships in life, it can often feel like no one relates to what we're going through. Sometimes people cannot see beyond their own situation and know how to help you. Perhaps you've been in a situation where you didn't really know how to help a friend who was going through something really tough. We need to be reminded that Jesus knew what it was like to be a human. He didn't come as God among men. He came in human form. This means he experienced physical things like hunger and tiredness, as well as emotions like sadness and excitement. 
If anyone knows about suffering, it's Jesus. If you're feeling like you need empathy for your situation and no one else understands, look to him. He understands. Lord, thank you for experiencing humanity on earth so that you're able to completely understand my difficulties. You already know my circumstances, so I simply ask that I will sense your presence in my life knowing that you care deeply for me. I lived most of my life thinking that church and God and all of this, the religion and all these things were supposed to happen in a certain order, in a certain way, even to pray. Like when you pray, you had to start it out like this and end it with this. I would try to make my prayer sound like someone else's prayer because I know some people that can say the most beautiful prayers ever and then here I am stumbling for my words. I don't know if you all have ever been like that. But over the past few years, I have come to know God so differently. It's not a formality to me. I feel such a connection with him, almost like he's human. I've, I've always said like, even like little me or little you, like the smallest of things that matter to us matter to him. It doesn't have to be like so big, like there's a limit and it has to be like from this and above for him to hear your prayers and answer and care for you. I have sat in my closet on the darkest of days and been so bitter that I've just been mad at God and asked him why. Why did it turn out like this for me? What good is going to come out of what you've done with my life? When in reality, it was my choices and it's what I did with my life. I feel like and maybe I'm wrong. You know, we all believe differently and that's okay. We can look at things so differently. And the thing that I've seen so much of in my life is that if you don't believe this way and you don't do this and this and this and this and this, then you're like a bad person. And that's not right. We all mess up. We all make mistakes. We all have our battles. We all bear our own crosses. We all have issues and all of our journeys are different. And I feel like he understands why. You know, even if you're bitter and you're hurt, even if you lash out and you say things you shouldn't, I feel like he understands where that came from. He understands that hurt. I felt like I had to live this way or he was done with me. He wouldn't have anything to do with me. And that's not how I've come to know God. I feel like he has a plan for my life. He understands the smallest of things. He has worked so many things out for good that I thought would destroy my family and all. He's so good. So whatever you're going through, I don't care if it's this little to me or this little to your parents, your kids, your brothers, sisters, whoever, those things matter to God. I deeply believe he knows everyone's heart and he knows everyone's situation. He knows what you've been through. He knows what you're going to face and he understands. And that's what's so good about him that I've come to know that even though I'm this big, I'm this big, this little, I matter to him. He knows my name. He knows who I am. He knows everything about me. He's so big that he can completely surround my life, my family, my kids, and take care of us, provide for us, know what we stand in need of, know what we don't need in our lives and remove it. And he's so, so good. It's not a formality. I don't always begin my prayers a certain way and end my prayers a certain way. I talk to God like I would talk to you. Sometimes when I don't even have words, I feel like he understands my heart. He knows what's going on. And hes it's not that you have to be a perfect person to have a relationship with God. That's what I'm saying. You do not. And I don't even know why I'm saying all this. It's totally off subject from that kitchen nook area. But I just, maybe it's for somebody. I don't know if anybody else understands. I may be talking in circles. I don't know. I get questions all the time. Do you go to church? No, we don't go to church. And I would like to go to church. I'd like to get my kids involved. It would be good. I have no idea where I'd even go. Don't even know who attends that I would feel judged by. And that's not what it's about. I've been deeply hurt by people that play church or go to church just to say they attend church when they Monday through Saturday live their lives and treat people like garbage. 
that is not doing you any good by saying, oh, I go to church. Yeah, we attend this church or what? No, you're playing church and I'm not going to play church. I'm just not doing that. I am in, I'm so imperfect, so imperfect that sometimes I feel like, why would you even use me? And I know he uses me. I know he's used me through this channel to reach a handful of you all, or maybe to make you feel a little better, or you've got something out of a devotional that I've read or whatever. But I think, why would you take somebody like me that sends every single hour or every single day and try to use me? I don't understand. There has come a point, and I'm there some days, that I hate doing YouTube. There are so many times that I feel like it's a job to me and I don't want to do it anymore. That's when I ask him, is it time to stop? Is it time to move on? Leave me somewhere else. If I'm not supposed to be here doing this, put a roadblock up. Like, where has the joy went? Of, of course it is extra income, but it's not, I don't want it to be a job to me. And I know you guys probably understand what I'm saying. But then I get a message that says, like, I've been struggling so bad and your devotional on this day was meant for me. And thank you so much just for reading it. I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want to lead anyone in the wrong direction. I don't want to shove religion down your throat, but I don't want to not acknowledge that the Lord has been so good to me because I believe he has. I'm not here to try to push religion. I'm not here to try to push anything. I just want you to know that if I can do it, you can do it. I know if y'all don't know some of my story, you can go back and watch previous videos. Not th been through anything traumatic and I'm not, it's not a feel sorry for me kind of thing at all, but I understand. I understand what it's like to wonder where your groceries are going to come from, wonder how you're going to pay that electric bill or to be a payment behind on your house or on your car. I've been there. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to struggle to buy your kids things for Christmas when all these other kids are getting Disney trips and shoes and clothes and all this stuff. I can't afford that either. I can't afford a Disney trip right now, nor do I have the desire to do that. I just want you to know you're not alone in your struggle. You're not. I've been there. I will say that it's always came from somewhere, always. If I've ever been in need, I feel like the Lord has spoke it to someone and someone's helped me or he worked something out so that we had what we needed and he always has. But, but anyway, the reason I said all this is to say God takes people that aren't perfect. God will take someone that's been addicted to drugs to help someone that is addicted to drugs. Maybe they had to go through that to save 10 or 12 people. I believe that the say, like the saying is, God doesn't call the anointed, he anoints the called. You know, I've been there and I just want you to know that you're not alone and there's hope. Thank God for hope because what would we do without it? But as I walked in this morning, I looked around at my house and it was trashed from all of the mess and I'm kind of at a stopping point to where I'm waiting on the wallpaper and all that. So I was like, I need to pick up. So I start looking around my living room, my dining room, and we have this computer chair and I know you guys have seen it before in videos, but it was left here by previous owners in the garage. Well, we would use it in the garage. We would sit and watch Allie play basketball or hit softball, like soft toss, whatever. We would just sit and use that. So I brought it in one day, took it upstairs to use it with my cricket. We play games, like if my, my kids are here and their husbands, boyfriends, friends, whatever are here, we'll play Farkle, we'll do, you just hang out and talk. And it is a fun space and I, I want it to always be a fun, safe place for anyone. But we do have fun. We sat around the table. We played Forkle, which is just a dice game. But that computer chair came in handy because it gave us an extra seat. There's, you know, we had Easter. We've had birthdays. We've had Christmas, all this stuff. So it's just been an extra place to see it. And as I looked at that chair, I thought, how ragged that chair is. It has scratches all over it. It's peeling. It's worn. It's tattered. But it is the most comfortable chair you will ever sit in. I love it. It rolls so smoothly. It's so comfortable. And it serves a purpose. And what I got from looking at that chair this morning is that no matter that it's not perfect. And no matter that it's worn and it's scratched and it doesn't look good. It's aged. It's 
not in perfect condition, it still serves a purpose. And I want you to know that no matter where you're at or what you've been through, if you're alive today and you're breathing, you serve a purpose. You have a purpose. If you don't know what your purpose is, I promise you he'll give it to you. He'll show it to you. But I just want everybody to know that there's hope and that you have a purpose. And that's just kind of what I got from all that. I normally don't sit down and even talk to you guys like this. But I just felt like I needed to say that. I just felt that this morning. And it gave me joy and it gave me hope. This season of my life, I feel two different ways about it. I, I look at it like Alden and I are in such a good place. Heather is my best friend in the whole wide world and a second mom to my kids and I love her so much. She helps so much. Alden helps so much. I've got the most wonderful parents in the world. Grandparents, aunts, uncles, all my family is getting along and we have went through our spells where we haven't, but we're all getting along and we're all loving on each other. The Lord's seen Lexi through the Lord seemed like seeds her so much and she's alive and well. That baby is so good, it's so beautiful, and he's blessed me with way more than I deserve. You know, I've got Reagan that works her tail off and she's so independent and I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of where she's at from where she came from. Lexi's married and got this beautiful little family now. I've got Kennedy at ETSU living her dream playing Division I softball. And then Allison is killing it at volleyball. And I feel like I had the best life ever. I can remember after Lakely was born leaving the hospital and feeling such a joy. And feeling like how could life even get any better than this. But there was still a sadness deep inside me. And I know that that's from the enemy. It's from haters that leave comments. Comments that you all don't even see. Comments that don't even make it. When you read negative, you're going to go negative. We, I try to stay positive. I don't want to hear that nonsense. But the sadness comes from the enemy and it's, it's the one inside you that are telling you you're wasting your time. You're making a fool out of yourself. Nobody wants to see you, hear you. You've only got 7,000 subscribers. You're so tiny that you're so overlooked you're never gonna make it all this stuff you know what they told the enemy told me that at 50 subscribers too but I made it I don't care about numbers I've learned a long time ago not to focus on numbers not to look at your pay every day you know whether you made $200 that day or you've made 50 I don't look at it I don't look at my subscriber count a lot of times I won't even look at my views and there's a lot of times that I don't even read my comments and that's not intentional. I will at some point. It's just that by the time I post, I'm working on something else. So I'm busy. I feel like I still have a purpose here and I have prayed so hard about this over the past few months that maybe the Lord's leading me in a different direction. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this, but every single time I doubt myself. I always get reassured in some way that I'm doing what I need to do. So anyway, if you're here for it, I appreciate it. I love you. I meant to say, let me say this because I forget in every voiceover. Thank you for all of the birthday cards that I got in my PO box. Thank you for all the cards for Lakely. Gifts, all that. I know I've said thank you before, but I did receive some cards for her. Um, I think Michelle, maybe. Um, sent Hunter a sticker, a little father-daughter firefighter sticker for his helmet, fire helmet. That was so cute. You all are so special to me and it makes me feel like we're connected. I say we're friends and I have got to know a lot of you on that level to where we are friends and you have my phone number even. Even if you don't like me, if my voice annoys you or you think that I'm not sincere in what I do, whatever. I hope you get something from it and if you don't then I hope you don't watch because I don't want to ruin anybody's day for sure but I wanted to say thank you for that for the birthday cards and Gail thank you for emailing me about the egg I said whoever told me that and I remembered that it was you when I seen your name I just could not think and didn't have time to go through the comments to find it in old videos but 
Anyway, I put your gift card in the mail yesterday. I said if you'd email me, I'd send you a gift card. So I hope that makes you feel loved and appreciated. And I hope that it just brightens your day. And I want to do little things like that. I can't do things like that all the time. But I do want to let you all know that you are special to me. And what you say to me matters. And I do hear you. I do see. And, you know, may not be immediately. Maybe a couple of days later. But I do see and I do appreciate it. And I met a subscriber. We were in Target and Kennedy and I it was the funniest thing. Kennedy and I were talking about me doing YouTube and is it embarrassing like for people on her ball team, her friends at school to know. But anyway, Kennedy and I was talking, I was like, does it embarrass you? And she was like, no, not at all. And I was like, okay. I was like, I, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know if it would embarrass you or not that I do that and that people that you play ball with and things like that know. She was like, no, not at all. She was like, sometimes it's kind of weird, you know, but she was like, it's not embarrassing. So we go into Target and I'm just walking through there, looking around and this lady was like, I think I know you. And I was like, oh, okay. And I figured she'd be like, are you so-and-so? And I'd be like, no. And she'd be like, well, you look just like her. You have a twin, whatever. But she was like, I'll watch your YouTube. And Kennedy's face went so red. <laughs> it looked like she could crawl under her shell. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. So that's the second time I've met someone other than people I know, obviously, that has come up to me and, you know, spoke and said that you watched me on YouTube and asked if I was Amanda. So anyway, that was really neat to get to meet you. She has a YouTube channel. I will put her channel name up on the screen. So if you guys don't care, go check her out and show her some love and support. She is redoing a mobile home and it's going to look so good when she's done. And I know that they have the best ideas. So anyway, go check her out. I met someone in Food City one day. The first subscriber I ever met was in Food City. She was like, do you do YouTube? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, I've seen your videos. That was a while back when I was a little bit smaller of a channel, which I'm still small, but minute is that a word? Anyway, so today I'm in the baby stuff. Likely is noticing lots, like she'll look at the lot. So I was like, maybe like an aquarium for her crib or something would be neat. So I was just looking through the baby things. So this lady comes up to me and she was like, are you looking for something for your granddaughter? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, I watch you on YouTube. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, thank you so much. So she shopped around with me for a little bit and looked at a few things, but that was so neat. So it's really neat getting to see you guys. And it's just really neat to get to see you face to face. So but anyway, we're going to go get to work on this kitchen and try to get that knocked out and then get this house cleaned up. I think Mandy Flores and I are going to collaborate one day next week on a whole house clean. So be looking for that because I definitely need that. She was like, do you want to collaborate on a whole house clean? I was like, um, I need to. <laughs> so sure, because that'll make me do it. Like I've always said. But anyway, let's go get this kitchen fixed. So it is afternoon and I still do not have this wallpaper. So I've been editing and this video is like 28 minutes long already. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and end it here and post today. So you guys can just see what we did last night and then we talked today. And then when the wallpaper gets here, just finish it. So I think that'll be better. I think a lot of you would rather see things as it happens like in real time anyway. And it's not really like my sports bra back there lord anyway um a lot of you guys would rather see it in real time anyway so that way you don't have to wait another day or two to get the rest of it edited and then it'd be super long so i'm gonna go ahead and post this and i just wanted to let you know um it just wouldn't make sense if i just cut it off right there where i was talking but anyway i love you guys i appreciate you being here i really do remember jesus loves you even if you're not perfect, none of us are. If you say you are, you're a liar. We're not perfect, and he loves us anyway. And he loves you so much. I love you so much. Flashy. Flash. Hey. Flashy loves you so much, don't you? But I will see you guys in the next one. And hopefully, this will be done. But thanks for watching, guys. Something more than this. I think I am Something